actually this was purely by chance. <clears throat> I wanted to become an, a gastroenterologist. I'm German and I had started my um, medical thesis, my medical promotion as it's called in, in Germany, um, in the field of chronic inflammatory bowel disease. I did a lot of work, three years of an experimental research work, basic science, and I really loved that. But in the end, I didn't get a position when I applied for the f most junior position in the German system. And then I thought, oh, I was really upset because they gave the post to one of my best friends. And of course I was upset. I thought, I don't want to meet these people anymore. <laughs> Let's get out of it. And I recalled what I enjoyed most, which was um, an ECG course, a placement in a practice for cardiology. And I actually had the, um, the great, I say, chance to work with one of the big um, electrophysiologists in the US when I did a rotation in cardiology at Tufts Medical School. So I had kind of had a little glimmer of, age, of, of, of um, cardiology and I thought that was something that I really enjoyed. And I really made sure that I would meet all the gastroenterologists in New York. And that's why I applied for cardiology. Entering electrophysiology was really proper by chance because I applied for cardiology as you would do in the German system, you would apply for a training post. And I happened to write my application to one of the most um, famous German electrophysiologists. And by the time that I wrote this application, I wasn't really aware of that fact. I applied more to the department, which was the time um, the University of Eppendorf in Hamburg. I came from the south and I really wanted to go up north and um, I applied there. But it turned out that my application was forwarded to this very famous professor and um, he accepted me and the rest is more or less history. <laughs> So I was actually surprised when I was given that title. I thought, well, uh, what do I have to present here? You know, I, was, I wasn't actually aware. And I started doing, as you do for a debate, you really de you know, research the topic really carefully. And I, I found out to my big surprise that in fact, yes, we have data that female physicians are better. And we have data from outcome mortality trials even to show that female physicians, in fact, do provide better care. And that is true no matter of the patient is female or if the patient is male. And there's also data to show that if the physician is male, he treats the male patients better than the female patient, which was really a big surprise to me, but so important. And of course, there is no data yet for arrhythmia care, really. And I think we should go and forward and, and um, collect this data. But of course, if you look into how many female physicians are actually in electrophysiology in the United Kingdom, then actually the number is very small. Yeah? There are about 14% of cardiologists, consultants, are female in this country. Um, in electrophysiology, we are 9% of the consultant in the um, census that was um, performed by the three colleges of physicians. So that's very interesting. <clears throat> if you see, and how is that in the trainee grades, this is actually gonna be a major change in the not too distant future. Because right now, as trainees in cardiology, we have a rate of 58% of female trainees. So no matter what, although it's at the chance at the moment for um, patients to see a female physician um, is relatively scarce, but in the future, this is gonna change. And I think the clue is, and that's what patient report, there's a, a recent consensus statement that patients actually appreciate communication. And it seems that female physicians are better communicators. And that's really where the, the truth is. And I hope I win my debate tomorrow. And it's going to be, um, you know, by the sheer fact that we have no data. And, and that's very important, I think.